What's up guys, Xavier Allen here. Today I'm going to be going over next permutation, a uh, medium problem on leak code asked by Facebook a few times. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll be posting videos every day while I'm studying for interviews. So let's just jump right into it. The description reads, implement next permutation, which rearranges numbers into the lexicographically next greater permutation of numbers. If the arrangement is not possible, re rearrange it as the lowest possible order in ascending order. Um, the replacement must be in place. So basically they don't want us to, re they, would, they don't want us to make a copy. They want us to return the same array that's already given. So they basically want us to make it one step closer to descending order. Um, as you can see here, it's just one step closer. They don't want it fully, just one step at a time. And if it's already fully descending, they want it in ascending order. So let's whiteboard this out. Um, <clears throat> so the intuition behind this is, um, so for this this problem right here, let me change the color. We're going to want to swap the four and the five. And we see that um, the, the four is the first number that's that's um, not increasing if we go backwards. So we're gonna want to swap those. So when we swap those, we have six, four, three, one, but we also need to remember to reverse these. So we need a reverse and a swap function, <clears throat> which will give us one, five, one, five, eight, five, one, three, four, six, seven. So we have to be able to, the. we want to grab the first number that's greater than the number that's no longer ascending, which is five. So five is the first number that's greater than four. And four is the first number that's no longer ascending when we go backwards. So that's how that works. And for this one, um, the same thing, except it'll we'll end here. Um, and we'll have to basically check to see if it's out of bounds. And if it is out of bounds, then we know we just need to um, reverse the whole thing. So this is like a base case, or not a base case, an edge case, I'm sorry. So let's start coding that out. Let's write our two functions. Um, int nums. And we're gonna pass in our array for reversing. And we just need to know where we're starting, where we're gonna reverse. And we need our, okay, yeah, you can see the code. And we're gonna pass in our array into the swap function again. And let's pass in i and just j. Okay. And so for swapping, hopefully you guys know how to swap. Int temp equals nums of i. Nums of i equals nums of j. And nums of j equals temp. Okay, so for reversing, we need to first grab the end, the length basically. Um, so int j equals the nums dot length minus one. And while star is less than j, we're going to swap the two. Um, so let's pass in nums, star, and j. And then we need to increment and decrement. So we're um, incrementing start and decrementing J. All right, so we have those two written out. Um, so now we need to write the code for the actual function. So we want to, we're just going to check to see which is the first number that's decreasing. So we want to compare two numbers at a time. So let's grab the um, second to last number equals nums.length minus two. 
So now we have three and <clears throat> so let's have a for loop while let's make sure we're not going out of bounds and nums of i. So we want to see when it's less than. So while nums of i is greater than um, nums of i plus one, we're going to decrement i. And when it's no longer, uh, we actually need to do greater than or equal to because in case of du duplicate values, we need to be able to pass over those as well. Um, we're going to decrement it. And so when we finally do, when um, nums of i is actually less than the previous, the one after it, we'll have the correct value. And so now we need to be able to grab five. Well, five is the first number that's greater than i. So nums of i. So Oh, so let's grab int j equals thumbs length minus one. And we want to make sure we're in. Oh, actually, I forgot to. We want to make sure. This is the edge case I was talking about. We want to check um, if i is greater than or equal to zero. So this is the edge case I was talking about um, it could be if it's not greater than or equal to zero then we need to swap the whole thing so or reverse the whole thing I'm sorry so there's no swapping that needs to be done um, this is only so if I is greater than or equal to zero that means it's not in the what do they call it the highest um, the highest arrangement um, so that's why we have that. So while, oh, we just need to grab j equals minus dot length minus one. So while j, we still have to make sure we're not out of bounds. And we want to make sh check for the first number that's um, while nums of i is greater than nums of i is greater or equal to nums of j we're going to decrement j, j. and so then when mm, nums of i is less than nums of j we'll finally have the correct j value and we're just going to swap them so we'll pass nums i and j and then we need to remember to reverse the um, the numbers after i. So it's i plus one. That's why we do i plus one because the numbers after i. And this is um, checking to make sure that it's already not in the highest order, descending order, basically. So if it's if it is in the descending order, it'll just call reverse. So that's why we have that. Um, for that base case and this should work if I did everything right sweet and it works so hopefully that ep explanation made sense guys I know this one's a little bit challenging this one took me a while to wrap my head around you can see all the errors I got um, so there you have it thanks for watching guys